My family has a home movie on VHS that's somewhere hidden in our basement from when I was about three years old. And it shows a lot of our life, uh, of our family at the time, with myself and my mom and my dad and my brother who was close to one at the time. And in this video, I very cutely sing a song from the old kids show, The Donut Man. And don't worry if you don't know it, but maybe you can Google it later on and see this amazing kids show from the 90s. This Christian-based show had songs and stories and fun skits that always directed kids closer to Jesus. And one of the songs in one of the episodes was called Hosanna, and it told the story of Jesus riding into Jerusalem on the donkey. And part of it goes like this, jumping up and down, jumping up and down, jumping up and down, shout Hosanna. And you could guess that the kids were supposed to be jumping up and down as fast as they could and then shouting as loud as they could at the time that Hosanna came on. Our passage today reminded me of this home video. And we have spent time reading from Matthew 21 verses 1 to 11, a passage that talks about Jesus' arrival in Jerusalem. And first, we start off this passage with a reminder of what was spoken many years ago when this very event was prophesied in the book of Zechariah. Jesus is preparing to enter into the city of Jerusalem. And at the beginning of our passage, he has instructed his disciples to go and get him a donkey for him to ride while he enters into the city. I wonder if you've ever seen or maybe even read the books of The Hunger Games. There are scenes in the movies as the tributes are being paraded around in the capital and they're all dressed up super fancy and they're riding in in these very elaborate chariots. Kings in the time of this passage did not enter into the city on donkeys. They had chariots, horses, and armies to follow, just like what I can imagine the Hunger Games. But Jesus instructs his disciples to go and fetch him a donkey. And this is not out of Jesus's character. In fact, we saw this even from his birth, that he was someone that was going to live his life humbly and simply. The king of the world entered by being birthed in a stable, surrounded by animals and dirt. And now he arrives into the city of Jerusalem. He arrives on a humble donkey. He did not require a moment of flashy celebration, but instead a, required a moment to show his authority through his humility. And there's something that all of us can learn about this approach. But I want to specifically talk to teens and young adults in this moment. There is a huge temptation, a great temptation to live life in an elaborate way. And I'm not saying that this passage means we can never have nice things, but I think that it does teach us something about how we react to our circumstances. When you score the winning goal, when you have had the performance of your life in that school play or talent show, when you get into that high ranked university you've worked for, or maybe when you've got that amazing job right out of university, how are you going to react? Approaching all things in humility and thankfulness has been demonstrated by Jesus as he approached Jerusalem. So let's remember that for our own lives. But in this passage about humility, there can also be a lesson about celebration. A crowd in Jerusalem went ahead of Jesus, laying down branches and their own cloaks onto the road to make a path for him to walk on. The crowd started to shout, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. And they celebrated Jesus and welcomed him into their city by giving them the highest honors. And in this moment, the crowds knew who he was and were able to tell all in the city of Jerusalem who he was when they asked. Humility does not override celebration. We can be humble while we celebrate. Jesus is worthy of our praise, and with our praise can come celebration. We can celebrate one another and use it as a way to encourage, to lift one another up. We can be celebrated. 
Jesus' humility does not mean that we're never able to be celebrated, but it's where we point people to after our celebration that truly matters. Our gifts and abilities have been given to us by God, and so we need to make sure that we give him all the praise that he deserves. And this passage gave me kind of two challenges that I want to implement going forward, and I want to pose them to you today. Number one, maybe it's time to actually take our humility temperature, something I made up. <laughs> Are we actually humble in our lives? Do we often boast about ourselves, elevate ourselves more than is actually needed, or do it while we bring others down? How much humility do we possess each day? Is there a way we can grow in this? And when I was in high school, I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty good at writing essays. I did well at them and I got good grades. And oftentimes when my classmates would talk about it, I would make myself seem pretty great about how well I did on my essays. Maybe you are just crushing it at your job and you walk around with a confidence that is more like a cockiness actually. Maybe it's time to approach your work with a humility and a grace and use the skills that you possess to help others achieve their goals in their work. A humility gauge, again, a term I've made up but helpful, is a helpful practice for us to do every few months or so. Take a look at where your pride is at and see if there are any common patterns in your life where pride becomes the main focus and humility is put on the back burner. And the second thing to remember is that it's time that we become better at celebration. When I read passages like the one we have today in the Bible, I see how amazing people were at celebrating. And we may be missing the art of celebration in our culture today. Celebration is actually a vital part of our life. The celebration of others and our celebration of God. When we gather together in groups and we worship, we can use it as a time to celebrate and praise God for all that he has done in our lives. And when we gather together, we can also use it as a time to celebrate how God has been working in our lives, how he has made us and how good he has been to us. Maybe it's time to actually look at your week this week or your month and find a time where you and your friends, your community, your family can celebrate. Celebrate celebration, sorry, invokes our praise. And as we finish up our time for Palm Sunday, let's remember why this passage even exists. Jesus is being celebrated as he is on his way to his death on the cross a sacrifice that was made for us. The celebration and humility we read about should direct us to remembering what Jesus has done for us, how his love and his care for us is so strong that he went to the cross for us. And that is the best thing we can be thankful for and we can celebrate. So I hope that you remember that this week as you continue on to reflect on this passage and go into your group discussions. Be blessed this week.